Hey guys, I'm here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming at Jackson Hole Music and I normally don't like to use the word epic for anything. It should be reserved for only things that are truly epic, but as you'll see in this footage that we took coming in to Jackson Hole, well, it is quite an epic place. So I was inspired to basically show you some epic guitar chord progressions and techniques in general that well, if you need to channel something majestic and full of wonder, then maybe this will help you do that. So the first little technique, I think, is the dynamic of speed that you can use when you're playing different chords. So, for example, I'll play the C major chord. And then a D major chord. And then an E minor chord. So already, you sort of have this mood of an unresolved feeling, which I think can be the beginning of something epic, but not yet epic. How many times will I say epic in this video? These two chords, which I called major chords, are actually just a root and a fifth. And then this note here, in the context of the D chord, it's an 11th. So that would be the first thing is to take very basic chord shapes like a power chord and you can add an open string to it to create extension. And the same can be done with this E power chord. So in the context of E, one, two, three, so this is the minor third. And we can put the octave here of both the E and the G. So now that we've determined how to play some truly epic sounding chords with some pretty basic foundations, come back to what I was talking about earlier, the dynamic of speed. So that would be a sort of pushing and pulling. And you can do this in whatever way you feel is the most moving, if that's what you're going for. So you can start slowly. faster and then back down, or you can slowly ascend. Or you can start quickly and go back down. So I think that that changes the feel of these three chords that already sound great and really allows you to manipulate the, uh, the overall level of epicness. I think that's a word. And like I said, with these chords, you can parlay this into, you know, a different genre if you want to, say blues, for example. quite as epic, I wouldn't classify it, but you can understand how the speed dynamic can really change any chord progression. But back to our more ominous sounding harmony, let's add in another extension. So this is just a root and a fifth. Let's add this note here. So that would be an E note, which is the major third. You can do the same thing here. That's a major third as well, so we're adding a little bit more color to the chord. And then 
but it's already included the minor third in this case, so we can add a flat seven. That D note, and that gives us something like this. Pair that with the speed dynamic. And then maybe you come back down, whatever that chord progression is, and you'll notice I'm not trying to resolve. So it can really go anywhere. Or what you feel is the most uh, staggeringly epic sound, then you can go that way. But. plenty of different ways and then again coming back to the speed element which inversion of a chord you choose, as long as that harmony remains the same, you can substitute. So these chord shapes are the same as uh, those as far as the notes go. They just have a different feel to them depending on where you place them on the guitar neck. An understanding of where notes are on the neck and what they are will allow you to essentially transpose them to different areas of the guitar neck. And you can do that by simply knowing that this is an A, B, C. Here's a C, here's a C, here's a C. And you can find the same notes. So those are C and a G. So we have a C, let's find a G. looking for a G. Well, here's a G. There's a G. So, so that's how you can go about it with just using your ear, even if you don't necessarily know the notes beyond the real basic ones, you can just use your ear to find them. So no music theory necessary. Music theory just makes it a little bit quicker for you to pick it up. So putting this whole thing together in maybe a more musical context and finished kind of way. Moving forward with that concept, you can also find other areas of the neck. You don't just have to use these open chord shapes. You can keep it close and simply by playing a scale up the guitar neck in two different strings. And putting those together. And when you add that open string, again, just changes depending on what notes are underneath it. It 
sounds pretty sweet. Then, going a step further, adding that note that we're putting on top. Can really start to move the epic meter even higher. Would be the icing on top is adding some little lead parts that sprinkle in between the chords that you play. And it can just be as simple as a note or two. So I hope that inspired you to write something epic. Till next time on the Guitar Store Tour from Jackson Hole Music. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.